Have you ever heard about the strange and unexplained events observed in Earth's atmosphere? Phenomena like temperature variations in the stratosphere, fluctuations in the total electron count, and even earthquake activity that seem to be connected to the positions of planets in our solar system. For decades, scientists have been collecting data and the statistical significance of these mysterious correlations is staggeringly high. Recently, a fascinating theory has emerged, suggesting that these anomalies might actually have been caused by a streaming invisible matter that becomes strongly interacting when it enters Earth's atmosphere. But what could this invisible matter be? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about Axion Quark Nuggets, or AQNs, and whether or not this could hold the key to these puzzles. This is the mean temperature data from Earth's upper stratosphere. So at 38.5 to 47.5 kilometers altitude at some particular location on Earth from 1986 to 2017. Let's zoom in on this smaller section. The dashed vertical lines here mark January of each year. So 1st of January 2008, 1st of January 2009, all the way through to 2017. Can you see the anomaly? What we see here is what you would expect from the sun in the summer. So between the dashed lines, the temperature rises and in winter it falls. It's pretty periodic and it's pretty smooth. It's obvious there's some anomaly here. What are those peaks around December and January? It seems to be happening every year around the same time all the way back to 1986. And the magnitude of this peak is massive. This peak does not change with changes in solar activity. It's not due to solar flares. It only occurs at this particular altitude. At lower altitude, the temperature variations are observed, but it's much less obvious. And at higher altitudes, the variations are not seen at all. This annually occurring temperature peaks at December to January. So this appears as a peak in the Earth's spectra at about 100 degrees. So if you convert our calendar into degrees, that's what it would be. But instead of just plotting the temperature data against the Earth's longitude coordinates, i.e. the position of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun on a given day, you can remap the same temperature data against the longitude coordinates of other planets like Mercury and Venus on those same days. And then you could test if there are any planetary effects. More specifically, if you take the temperature measurements each day and calculate the longitude position of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun at that time, and also the longitude positions of other planets in their orbits around the Sun, then instead of binning the temperature data against Earth's longitude, you bin it against the longitudes of other planets. If you do this, then you'll get what we call a projection onto other planetary longitude coordinates. By doing this projection into other planetary longitude coordinates, you can check if any periodic patterns or peaks in the stratospheric temperature were locked not just to Earth's orbital position, but also to the orbital positions of other planets. So for example, if it's affected by seasons, solar activity, or planetary waves like those caused by the Coriolis effect as the sun rotates. It turns out that the temperature spectra, even in different planetary flames of reference, also exhibit these peaks. So strong evidence that this is related to the orbits of the planets and not simply caused by conventional Earth-based atmospheric effects. It's also not clear that it's related to solar activity because they check against the F10.7 solar line, which is about 2.8 gigahertz. This supposedly acts as a proxy for measuring the solar activity. So if these peaks can't be explained by the Earth or Sun, then what could they be caused by? Well, there is a theory that suggests that this could originate from invisible streaming matter, from the dark universe, which occasionally, if the alignment is right, can be gravitationally focused by the sun and the planets towards Earth's upper atmosphere. 
when you trace back to the source of this invisible stream of matter, you get none other than the galactic center. Now this is just the first of the puzzling mysteries. Another mystery is the total electron count or TEC of the Earth's atmosphere. These are free electrons that typically originate from solar radiation and particularly extreme UV radiation that interacts with oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the upper atmosphere and knocks out their electrons. Here, again, the TEC is higher during December solstice at about 100 degrees by about 20% or more compared to June solstice. And this can't be explained by the difference in the Sun-Earth distance. The TEC correlates to the orbital positions of the inner three planets. But remarkably, the strongest correlation appears with the phase of the moon. Now, the last mystery is a bit of a weird one and would usually seem completely unrelated, but the TEC rate seems to be correlated with the rate of strong earthquakes, so those with magnitudes greater than eight. To explain this, we introduce AQNs, axion quantum nuggets. AQNs are hypothetical bundles of antiquarks wrapped inside a layer of axions that are also a prime candidate for being the elusive dark matter. These nuggets were first hypothesized by, in my opinion, the smartest man on the planet, Ed Witten. And supposedly they behave like normal matter in dilute environments, but become strongly interacting when passing through dense regions of the universe, such as stars, planets, and the Earth's atmosphere. Now it's important to note that axion quantum nuggets were hypothesized long before these mysteries were even known about, but they could solve them all. Axion quark nuggets made of antimatter would produce enhanced total electron content in the Earth's atmosphere, because as they enter the atmosphere, they would undergo annihilation with atmospheric matter, releasing a huge amount of energy around two giga electron volts per baryon. This, like solar radiation, would ionize the atmospheric gas and increase the TEC. But if some antimatter HQNs were to travel to the Earth's interior, the huge energy deposition would generate intense shock waves along their path due to their high Mach number. If an AQN hits a seismically active region, these intense shock waves could potentially trigger large earthquakes, similar to how human activities like nuclear tests can induce quakes. The AQNs might also help on the long-standing solar corona heating problem, where the mechanism behind the heating of the solar corona is still unknown, but it is likely to be due to tiny nanoflares that are individually very weak, but numerous enough to generate the high temperatures observed in the corona. Nanoflares could potentially be annihilation events of AQNs. Particles moving through the coronal plasma and annihilating with normal matter can lead to the drastic change of temperatures seen in the sun. In other words, solar nanoflares are anti-nugget annihilation events. And if this is true, this is something potentially NASA's solar Parker probe will be able to confirm. What's really nice is that the axion quark nugget model would also explain the matter-antimatter asymmetry problem of why all the universe is made up of matter and antimatter is nowhere to be seen even though they should have been created at the same time in equal parts. With the AQN model, all the antibaryons are stored inside axion nuggets. So there you have it, gravitational lensing is potentially focusing a big stream of dark matter on us and rocking our lives with massive earthquakes. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. If you're interested in finding out more, check out my links below. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. And as usual, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.